You're listening to The Practical Wealth Show with Curtis May, putting you in the driver's seat to control your finances. Let's start the Practical Wealth Talk about alternatives to Wall Street. Welcome, everybody, to The Practical Wealth Show. This is Curtis May recording another episode. And uh, today, the title of this episode is Think like a CFO, a chief financial officer in your own personal finances, all right? And so if you do that, you will definitely en- enjoy a brighter future. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this, I, wanna, I tend to get down in dirty in the minutia. Most wealth is lost by how people manage cash flow. So I know I've done a few episodes and we've talked about turnkey real estate investing and and, you know, all these exciting things I really like, you know, teaching about alternative investments. So if you're listening to this, people will ask, well, who do you work with? I work with, uh, I would say, middle income, upper middle income clients. So middle income is if your f- household income is 45 to a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars, that's that's middle income. And so, folks, a lot of these people have money, but you know, you're, you're broke. So if you're listening to this going, well, I'm a, you know, I've got to prepare for my kids college. I've got, uh, you know, I've got to take care of aging parents. If you ever feel like you're like one major layoff, uh, away from disaster. So you always have this nagging feeling that, you know, you're making more and more, but you feel like you're stuck in quicksand. Well, this I've worked with you, okay? That's who I'm looking to help. And uh, so so one of the things that I've always talked about is that you have to run your household like a business. As as I record this, it, what should have aired is my interview with my favorite author. Uh, we teach the center of our strategy is teaching people how to run their personal economy like financial institutions run there. So we had an interview with uh, Jeffrey Reeves, uh, the author of Money for Life. And so we actually make that book our operating system, you know, of, and, you know, starting out with the, uh, so I think you have to begin with the end in mind. And so as we think about running your personal economy like a CFO, well, what's the goal of what you're trying to do? So number one, you want to, we just talk about the foundation of a strong, personal economy. See, here's the thing. You can't control the economy, but you can control your personal economy, you know, your production and consumption as a family. See, so that doesn't matter who's in office. That doesn't matter uh, what goes on the economy because you can't control that, but you can do things to protect your personal economy and you can do things to grow your personal economy in good times and bad. And so you have to, first thing you've got to do is stop being, acting like a damn victim, all right? And educate yourself and take control of your personal economy. Now, so if that upsets you, cut off the podcast. But if you're saying, yes, I want to learn how to be in control, then Curtis is your guy, all right? And uh, because I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And this is a process. You know, Jeffrey told me this is in order and this is the order. You know, freedom from debt to others um, is the first one. So you've got to work and and not probably not on this podcast, but I'm going to go in detail on laying out a strategy for eliminating hear me now, your non-preferred debt, because I do believe there's good debt and bad debt, you know, because our, you know, in 1971, Nixon took dot us dollar off the gold standard okay and so we have a fiat currency we don't have money money's supposed to be a store of value we have currency all right and so currency's got to move so if you're holding you know we have federal reserve notes which mean a note is debt so you're saving debt with the goal of of <laughs> the fed's goal is is inflation which is destroying purchasing power of your dollar so the longer you hold these monetary units called dollars the less they buy okay so you've got to keep them moving so you've got to learn how to manage your money with all that stuff that's why um, in fact, I'll probably put this in the show notes. I have a, a a little white paper called Why Traditional Planning Doesn't Work. And there's so many moving parts that you have to understand that. So what happens is 
you've got to so that so step one is freedom from debt to others if you're going to be in debt learn to be the bank and be in debt to yourself especially since 35 cents of every dollar you that leaves your personal economy is in the form of debt to others so if you can learn to get control of your financing you will begin to recapture 35 cents of every dollar OK, the other 30 percent is taxes. So you need to have a tax strategy. So we're going to get into that uh, a little bit on, on another episode. All right. So the second pillar of a strong personal economy is ready cash. See, folks, you've got to save money. Now, Kiyosaki says, uh, Rob Kiyosaki, you know, savers are losers. And uh, that is true. Actually, once you understand that our dollar is not dollar is debt, but the verb saving is still, you still got to pay yourself first. You still have to save 10 to 20% of your income. Now, where to put it, that's another question. So we believe permanent life insurance is actually the best place to store cash. Probably by the time this aired interview airs, I should have, uh, you will have heard from Kim Butler when we talk about the seven principles of prosperity. And um, uh, I have an ebook that I uh, actually require our clients to read called Live Your Life Insurance. And also um, Financial Planning Has Failed, where you can get into the tenets of prosperity economics, how to store cash. And, you know, we teach people save from income, invest from assets. OK, the third pillar is passive income you don't have to work for and that you cannot live. OK, and. Uh, so now all of a sudden that frames, you got to learn to invest for cash flow. You got to learn to buy assets to send you a check every month. And fourth is developing a legacy of wealth and wisdom. All right. So let's start with that objective. So now, you know, a lot of you listening to this are, you know, business owners, uh, your, uh, professionals at work and you, you know, you handle money. And so many people handle money well at work, but horribly at home. Um, and so there's a different mindset when you're expected to act uh, like a professional. And see, what if you handle your personal finances with the same professionalism as a CFO takes care of a business? Because see, you are a business, you know, because if people talk about economics and you hear all this stuff on on the news and, and, and you know, economics, so I hope I'm pronouncing this right, is from the Greek word root, um, economos. And all that means is household manager. So at its core, eco, you know, economics is about managing your household. So if this is, folks, you can do this. Trust me, two plus two is four. That's what I want you to understand. This is very simple, all right? And uh, so just because, you know, so think about it. Just because no one is watching you doesn't mean you can be irresponsible with your finances at home. It's because somebody is watching you. Kids are watching you. Your, uh, you know, your spouse is watching you. Um, and, and so you've got to act like a CFO and take control of your money. We're going to talk about a few steps to how to do that. All right. So here's the thing. The first thing that we're going to talk about in becoming a CFO is number one, you've got to live by a budget, but I really want to use the word you want to live, you want to have a cash flow management system. All right. And so you, what, what you want to be able to do is see the wealthiest companies, they have budgets, they have a uh, department uh, and a department and manager are expected to follow. So they know, OK, here is the money we're revenue. Here are our expenses. Here's what we got coming in. Here's what we got going out. OK, I asked somebody the other day, if you were a business, could you run a business or stay in business very long if you didn't manage um what came in revenue and what went out expenses? How long would you be in business? Not very long. Well, guess what? You are in business. That's called your household, right? And you're the CEO. And so the CEO's job is to grow, to expand, to get better, greater market share. So that means you need to learn how to you know, get better at your skills, learn how to generate more revenue. But you need to be the CFO or your spouse or somebody. Somebody's got to take on that role. Um, and so you should prepare a monthly income statement or for, I like the word forecasting. Um, 
and you should and, and and chart any discrepancies. You need to know. All right, you know, here is what my obligations are. Here is the money that's coming in. Um, starting out with what's the first person that needs to get paid? You. Okay. And so you need to go to the top of that list, you know. So savings is an expense, folks. And so the only way money gets down onto your asset column is if you put it there. So you've got to, so if you make so let me break it down. So let's say you net. So let's say if you have a job. Okay, we live in a net world. If you're a business, I want this to be gross. But if you're an employee, uh, then let's say you net $3,500 a month. Well, how much does Curtis want you saving? I want you to save $350. That's 10%. Okay. Uh, if you're really good, you know, 15 to 20. But let's just say 10%. You know, if if you can't, look, I don't care. Here's the thing. I don't care what you start with. Here's what I care is that you start, that you have the discipline to start. One time I told this girl, look, you ain't ready to work with me. Here's what I want to say, because she was definitely spendthrift. I said, listen, just I want you to take, what did I tell her, $25 a pay and just put it into your credit union account. And let's talk in three months or six months, because I need to see that you have the discipline to just do that. You need to prove it to yourself that you can do that. So, folks, just start $10 a week. I don't care. OK, you've got to learn how to manage a budget surplus. All right. And so if you don't have a system for managing cash flow. Or a budget, then creating one is your first order of business. So step one, create a cash flow plan and live by it. Here's the second thing you need to do to act like a CFO and can take control of your money. Manage your debt. See, the, one of the biggest responsibilities of a CFO is the debt structure of the company, right? So while you may not have the option of issuing stocks and bonds uh, uh, to finance your household, which would be nice if you could, you know, print your own money, which there are ways to do that uh, legally. Or if you have an idea, your brain is what creates value. So if you think of a good idea, you you really have the ability to print money by creating value for others. Somebody will write you a check for um, that's another podcast though, but while you, uh, you may not have the option of issuing stocks or raising capital, you do have access to debt, credit cards, personal loans, lines of credit, uh, uh, to just a few examples. So dank ha debt has sunk, you know, more than a few companies and the few and, and more than a few households, right? 35 cents for every dollar leaves most people's economy in the form of debt. That's on average, right? And so I know people whose debt ratio is way out of whack because what happens is, see, if you're not managing your cash flow and you make, you know, uh, <laughs> just like the U.S. government. So if you make $3,500 a month, but your bills are $4,000 a month, Here's what's happening. You're either drawing down because numbers tell a story, folks. So you have to do your financial statements because financial literacy is not reading stock charts or, you know, dumb stuff. They tell you stock, financial literacy is accounting. It's the ability to read numbers. Folks, your numbers tell a story. And so what you've got to do is understand what that story is what your story is. A lot of times when I work with people, I'm just in, I can talk to you for five minutes and ask you a series of questions and I can draw you the story of your financial life on a napkin with tremendous accuracy. You know, I'm like Neo from the Matrix. I can see financial statements in my head, right? And so, um, and so you've got to, once you see it, see now, see the first step is awareness, okay? And you've got to be able to be aware of it so you can make changes, right? And so what happens is the ability to manage debt is critical to your financial health. So you got to minimize your use of non-preferred debt. See, if you have to pay for it, it's bad debt, okay? So if you're buying credit cards, all the time I used to do, sometimes I'll do these financial uh, uh, workshops and I always want to do credit repair. And I always start out with, listen, I'm reluctant to teach you this class because y'all want to go and, you know, get good credit so you can go out and buy a bunch of here's why i say it you go out and buy a bunch of dumb shit. 
you know, about you want to go buy a bigger car, you want to buy a bigger house, you want to, you know, you want to be able to get in debt so you can go to, you know, if depending on what market, rent a center, or you want to, you know, you just want to consume and see. So understand debt is an obligation on future earnings. They're using your future earnings as collateral. That's what you're doing. So you're still paying for stuff, you decisions you made three, four or five years ago. OK, and so you've got to learn to if you're going to go into debt, you need to go into debt to buy an asset that makes you money. OK, that is good debt. That's called that's not even debt. As a matter of fact, that's leverage It is debt. But what happens is you've got to take debt, other people's money to buy a real asset that generates cash flow for you more than what the debt costs you. And that is how you're going to get ahead. That is how which you as a Kiyosaki has a book out called why the rich get richer. So folks, y'all have got to manage your cash flow because debt is a two-edged sword, right? And so in the hands of a fool, it's a bad thing. So if you're skilled and you're financially literate, it is a very powerful weapon, but with great power comes great responsibility, as Uncle Ben told Spider-Man, right? And so that's what you have to do. So you've got to, when debt is necessary, use it wisely, you know, have a plan for it, and um, you you know you need to get comfortable with it because you're going to need to use it if your goal is to is to be rich. Okay, who is who I'm talking about? Financial independent. All right. Um, so step three is engage in strategic planning or financial planning. See, good planning is actually five parts. Helping you know financial planning is supposed to be helping families, average families, not rich families, spend, save, invest, insure and plan for financial independence. So I would argue the industry has it screwed up because everybody's morphed into wealth managers. And so, and you know, all the advisors are running after rich people, but the financial planning created by Lauren Dutton was actually designed for middle America. But most of the companies have moved away from their roots, okay? And so you have to sit down and you have to think. See, in the seven principles of prosperity, the first a uh, tenant is think. You have to think from a prosperous mindset. You've got to make plans. You've got to envision what you want, you know. And so I spend a lot of time helping people, you know, envision what they're trying to get done. And let's, okay, you're at point B. Where is point B? It's A and B, right? Two quickest distance between the two points is a straight line. And so how do I get from A to B? Well, first of all, you got to figure out where you are now. And so a lot of times I help people figure out, okay, where are you now, first of all, so that we have an accurate baseline of where you are. And then now where do you want to go? And now what's the most efficient way to get you from point A to point B? And so you have to think from a macro standpoint. You've got to see the big picture. You know, stop, you know, most people are very transactional and everything you do affects everything else you do. So you've got to be ready and you've got to see the whole picture, okay, of the of the economy and how you protect yourself. So what is your financial independence plan? So I don't, you know, people talk about retirement. I don't care about retirement. Retirement means to withdraw or to put out of use. I want you to be able to do what you want to do instead of what you have to, uh, which is a function of cash flow. So you want to be financially independent. I use Jim Rohn's definition of being able to live like you want to live from the income from your personally invested assets. All right. And so if you're thinking like a CFO, you have to do some planning. So what is your, you know, quarterly semi plan to grow your passive income to, uh, systematically figure out how to, you know, start a part-time business. Folks, you got to learn how to make money. So you got to get over yourself. You got to sell something. You got to sell your stuff. You've got to sell uh, somebody else's stuff. There's affiliate program. There's network marketing. If you already have a business, you got to figure out that you got to realize that you're, wherever business you think you're in, you're really in the marketing business. And um, you've got to learn how to find people that need what you do and ask them for a check, okay, or ask them for money. And, um, you know, and uh, that's how you grow. So, folks, you've got to get more. You've got to learn how to earn. I always tell people, look, you know, somebody calls me, well, I'm not working right now. Well, listen, I can't steer a parked car. OK, so you got to figure out how to, you know, what is the, our money for life form? It says get money, bank it, borrow it, spend it, repay it. So 
the, but the first tenet is get money. So we're actually, as you keep listening up, I'm going to break down each of those points. So I'm going to do a whole series on get money, talking to you know people that will coach you on performance. To we're going to talk about marketing uh, for business people. We're going to talk about networking or affiliate marketing, Amazon sourcing. There's ways to make money, folks. You're not looking and you got a time out for okay i'm just going to find a job and wait for somebody to give me a check folks you're going to get run over okay because the world don't work that way anymore all right and so you've got to engage in some strategic planning short and learn term you know i try not to keep our plans in you know within three to five years i don't think you there's too many moving parts so you need to keep it keep it you know uh have short-term objectives that excite you that you're willing to you know, break down in 90 day increments and in one year increments and set up, you know, plans to work towards your goals. All right. So step four is you got to minimize your tax exposure and maximize your tax breaks. See, you know, for example, U.S. companies have moved their headquarters overseas to avoid paying U.S. corporate income tax. The tax code is complicated for everyone, regardless of income, but that's no excuse to remain in the dark. All right. You got to either educate yourself and get professional assistance because you need to be able to ask good questions. OK, so one of my favorite re- books on that is uh, and I had a chance to spend a lot of time uh, at a conference a few months ago with Tom Wheelwright, the author of Tax Free Wealth. And folks, he says, look, he gets excited about tax tax code in his mind is a treasure map. Right. And see, folks, there's two tax codes, believe it or not. There's one for employees. And there's one for business owners and investors, all right? And so guess which one is better? And so you need to figure out how to get on the business owner side of the tax code. So right now, if you got a job, you earn money, you get taxed right out of you before you even get money out of your payroll, you get taxed, you get to spend what's left over. But if you're an entity, if you're a business, if you're an investor, you get to earn money, you get to get your money pre-tax, you get to spend it or invest it, and then you pay taxes after you've taken your legitimate deductions, right? If you're an employee, you get to earn money, you get taxed, you get to spend what's left over. So it's hard to get ahead when you're only getting 6% of your money, all right? And so you got to learn taxes. You need to get with a professional, and then you got to interview them because they're not all created equal, okay? So I've got questions where I figure out, you know, who's who, I know enough to know whether or not this person knows they're talking about. And so if you're in business, folks, you got to get an accountant, okay? You can't go to, oh, my cousin, you know, uh, does stuff part-time or one of these little corner tax shops. You can't do that, okay? You need strategy. You need to start thinking about planning next year, like in October, November, okay? I'm going to get somebody on I have a, 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 my accountant does a workshop called uh, Can I Deduct It? You know, how to write off your kids, how to make your life a walking tax deduction. So we're going to get her on. All right. And so you have to keep good records. OK, so I'm going to put in the show notes a link uh, to a manager uh, system that I use where you can, um, you know, while you're out to eat, you can take pictures of your seats. You can store your stuff. It's stored in the cloud and you can, you know, note what you have. You know, there's systems. Um, I can't think of it right now where you can track your mileage. So if you've got a business, if you're in network marketing, you know, I have a strong background in network marketing. So if you're in network marketing and you're listening to this, call me because your your best investment, uh, your best, you you know, having a business is not optional. First of all, okay, if you want to cut your taxes, because if you're an employee, the only tax break that you have is your, for the most part, I mean, it's, you know, I'm, I'm generalizing. I'm not a tax professional. Get get advice from your tax professionals. But you basically have your, uh, your house and your kids, okay? So, and so y'all, you know, you hear this advice, well, I'm going to do a bi-weekly mortgage, like I'm going to double up my mortgage payment. All right. Well, guess what? Every time you send extra interest in, you're killing your partner because right now the interest is deductible for you and you make each payment more expensive. All right. And so right now that, that money is, is right coming off your, I uh, believe, right off your schedule A and two, your kids. All right. So you're, you've got to learn how money works, all right? And so that you can frame your decisions of what you do. Just don't take, you know, dogma that you hear on TV. You got to look, everybody's situation is different, all right? And um, 
So you have to be diligent. You got to get organized. You know, one of the things the service I offer is a money organization plan. And so you've got to get with somebody and take advantage. You know, uh, Laura Limeyer has a saying that individuals pay taxes and corporations or businesses make money. When Trump says stuff like, well, you know, and during the campaign, uh, you know, I don't pay taxes. You know, people try to make it look like, well, that's doing something wrong. Folks, it's your money. All right. And he says, I don't pay taxes. That's really smart. That is really smart. Tom Wilright says, listen, the tax code is a treasure map. Code is another word for map. So the the tax code is really an incentive plan. It's a stimulus plan, actually. And so if you do what the government wants done, you know, there's tax breaks for not for doing what the government wants done. Well, the government needs to create jobs. And they don't create jobs, contrary to what politicians run for elections say, that entrepreneurs create jobs. So if you're taking the risk, putting your capital at risk to start a business, then you get your deductions for doing that. If you own real estate, your product is providing safe, clean, affordable housing. There are deductions for that. You know, if you are the government wants to become energy independent. So there are uh, tremendous tax advantages for you know, energy exploration, okay? And there's, and the food. So the government wants you to buy, you know, provide housing, provide jobs, provide food or provide energy. So if you can arrange your affairs to do any or all four of those things, you will seriously uh, minimize your taxation, all right? Uh, number five is as a CFO, you've got to continue to build your skills and knowledge, okay? CFOs are constantly in the hot seat and it's hard to keep their jobs. So you can't, you fire yourself, but you still need to be your best. Spend time each month increasing your knowledge of personal finance. I always train people that or tell people that, you know, you got to read a book a month on money. All right. So if you read a book a month on money and we do our annual review, you will be better. As your knowledge goes up, your anxiety comes down and are your questions will get better. And you start read a book, you know, and you can, it can be reading. Oh, so, oh, curse, I don't like to read. Get over it, all right? But here's a way to cheat. Audible is great. Uh, I'm actually going to put an Audible link in, in, in my notes uh, of my recommended reading list. Uh, we're probably, by the time this comes out, we'll have Practical Wealth uh, Show site up, and I'll have a resources file there uh, with our recommended reading. And uh, but all, and podcasts like this, you know, I mean, I'll put out some of my favorite podcasts. But folks, if you're driving around, you're working out, and you're listening to radio, that is a complete waste of time. That does not make you any money, okay? Or allows you to improve your skills, folks. Because here's the thing: you can get fired for uh for actually, if you got a job, you can get fired for one or two reasons, any reason. Or no reason at all. And see, so you're either in sales or supportive sales. So if you're sitting there and everybody wants to be project manager of this and director of that and head of this department, listen, you got to figure out where the money's made and figure out how to make sure you're on the money making side of the equation. Because if you're not bringing in money, you're a cost. And guess what corporations do at cost? They cut them and your butt's going to get fired. All right. Six is learn to maintain excellent records. So financial officers are dependent on records and they prepare financial documents for the release of each quarter. Do the same within your household. Now, I'm talking to Curtis here as I say this. All right. Because that's that's what <laughs> my wife and I to get, get better at. Of, of uh, We got them, um, but I've got to reconcile my account or either I'm going to send them to somebody to do them. But, you know, you want to get on them. I'm going to actually probably do a video on how to create a financial filing cabinet um, and, and really get, see, money will not come into chaos. So you do need to get organized. All right. And so keep good financial records and that provides you with the, the information you need to assess your financial health and review them regularly. So you got to know where you're going. You need to look at your budget. You got to look at your month. You need to track your, uh, your net worth. But most importantly, you're, are you growing your passive income? Because that which gets measured gets done. You get what you focus on. If you're focused on growing, you're going to grow. If you're just la-la land, going to work, coming home, and and not thinking about it, you know, you don't wander around and end up on the top of damn Mount Everest. You got to focus. When you want to climb a mountain, there's base camp, there's strategy. If you're going this time of year, you got to get your equipment together. You got to get all that stuff. I mean, there's strategy for that. So you're trying to scale the summit 
of financial independence and you that is just not going to happen all right you got to focus so here's the thing so let's go back you got to maintain records you got to track your expenses your savings your investing activities know your net worth know your passive income know your income and outgo maintain excellent records you got to focus on profit number seven okay in a household situation profit can be thought of say as savings right and so when your savings turns to profit, you have money left over to save and invest, okay? But you got to pay yourself first, right? And so companies that routinely turn over a profit are successful. And the same can be said about households. Make the amount of money you save every month a priority. So it should be 10 to 20%. And you got to do that. And so you can expect an affluent future if you do that, okay? And so because here's the thing. You got to save money, right? So when you get savings, I've said this before, there's only four things you can do with savings. You can save your savings. You can consume your savings, which you don't want to do. You can loan your savings or you can invest your savings. See, contrary to what, what uh, you know, mainstream economists try to tell you, savings is the backbone of our economy, not consumption. Okay, you can't buy your way to wealth. All right. And so you have to become a good steward. You got to manage a budget surplus. Here's right out of Richest Man in Babylon, right? The seven cures for a lean purse. Part of all you earn is yours to keep. I mean, you got to be earning money first, right? Budget thy expenses. You got to manage cash flow. You've got to uh, uh, make your goal multiply. So from your savings, you got to employ your capital. Okay. And uh, four, you got to make of your home a profitable investment, okay? You got to make sure that you're buying somewhere that you like that uh, affords you and your family a good place to live, but not too big a house because a house is not your number one investment. It's not even an asset if you just uh, 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 describe an asset as something that puts money in your pocket every month, all right? Unless you are Airbnb or something. And um, you've got to ensure future income. You've got to guard your treasure from loss, invest in things you understand. Um, you've got to uh, increase your ability to earn. I think I left one in there. I'm doing this out of memory. But see, folks, you've, there are principles to this stuff. Principles, I, I try to get people to understand principles. Principles don't change, okay? Principle products don't matter. What I want you to understand is basic principles to when a dollar hits your account, there's only four things you can do with it. Spend it, save it, invest it, or give it away. And so the, your philosophy, as Jim Rohn says, the, is the order in which you do that. So if you think, well, I'm going to spend it first, I got to pay bills first, which is another form of spending it, you're going to be poor, okay? You're going to be broke, okay? Because you've got to think, I've got to save it first, then invest it um, then I'm going to pay my bills. And then somewhere in there, you know, probably at the top also, you got to give it away because that is a wealth principle. So tithing is a wealth principle. And so, but the only way to be able to tithe is to manage your cash flow so that you feel like you can give God his his 10% and still be able to, to you know, do what you got to do with yours and live on 80% of your expenses. So um, I'm going to leave that part up to you. So a good CFO is an expert and applies his expertise wisely, okay? So become a personal finance expert um, with the same mentality. So I wanna leave you with this, folks. Act like a CFO when dealing with your household finances. Be as much a professional at home as a CFO is at work. Your financial future is definitely worth the time and energy. And so with that, folks, I want you to have a great day. Uh, go back through this again and, uh, you know, take some notes. I will I'll put a link to this outline in the show notes. And, folks, I wish you a great day. Folks, I, I wish you all prosperity. We will talk to you soon. Make sure that, you know, if you, if you, if you like our show, please, one, give us a good review. And, two, don't keep us a secret. Share us. Share uh, the podcast uh, with your friends. We want to get this message out there of prosperity economics movement. And you all have a great day. Thanks for listening to Practical Wealth. To access the show notes and resources, go to practicalwealthshow.com. To get your questions on the show, go to practicalwealthshow.com.
This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any investment decisions, consult a professional. This show is copyrighted by Practical Wealth. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.